Now, News 10 ABC at the track, sponsored by your Capital Region Honda dealers. Because it's not just the person who shot, it's their family, it's their neighborhood, it's the entire community of Albany County that's affected by, by the gun violence. Right now at four, physical wounds and emotional scars left behind by violence in the Capital Region. Details on the increased need for crime victim services and where to get them. New York State issuing a vaccine requirement for tens of thousands of workers. The deadline set and what happens if they don't meet it. Plus, safety concerns are close to a local uh, parking garage where the wheels who can rely there, where can they park their cars? Reaction tonight from the Collar City. Your local news at four starts right now. Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us here at the Saratoga Racecourse. I'm Lydia Colbita. And I'm John Gray. Glad you're with us on this beautiful Wednesday. Uh, countless Capital Ridge residents have been impacted by gun violence this summer. It's not just the physical wounds, though, that require treatment. This summer surge in shootings leading to an increase in the number of people seeking emotional help as well. Houston ABC Stephanie Rivas showing us now where those who need help. We get calls from people who've had bullets in their cars or gunshots through their windows into their apartments. The Albany County Crime Victim Services and Sexual Violence Center offers help to victims, but services don't stop there. Because it's not just the person who shot, it's their family, it's their neighborhood. The director says they are seeing a rise in people seeking help in the wake of violent crimes. Their ability to get out more is allowing them to seek the services that they weren't able to access last year. St. Peter's Healthcare Partners is seeing another trend. Calls for crime victim services at the emergency department have doubled since last year. Why do you think that is? I think that it's a combination. Of the director of crime services agrees that people are seeking help more after quarantine, but it's not just that. I also think that there are some crimes that are just happening a little bit more right now. And the sentiment from both facilities is the same. Everyone impacted from gun violence is deserving of help. But we really look to try to help the whole community because we know that harm people harm people. And all of these counseling, therapy, and advocacy services are confidential and come at zero cost, but they can make a big difference. How can we best support you as you're going through this very traumatic um, experience and, and trying to cope with it? The process is simple. Just call Albany County at this number to make an appointment or call St. Peter's Hotline to get support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if you miss these numbers, they'll be on our website, news10.com. Reporting in Albany, I'm Stephanie Rivas, News 10 ABC. Happening tonight, this city ordered closure of a local bar will be reviewed by Albany's Board of Zoning Appeals. The closure of Cafe Hollywood on Lark Street is the first item on tonight's agenda. The meeting starts at 6 be live streamed on YouTube. The bar was shut down over the weekend under an emergency order issued by Mayor Kathy Sheehan, who linked the establishment to a deadly shooting that happened early last Friday morning. We'll have much more on this story, including the link to tonight's meeting on our website, news10.com. Well, in the race to vaccinate, all New York State employees now have until Labor Day to get vaccinated against COVID-19 or face weekly testing requirement. Governor Cuomo says he's following the lead of President Joe Biden, who's expected to announce on Thursday a vaccine mandate for all federal employees. The governor also uh, requiring all patient-facing employees who work at state hospitals, they also have to get a shot. That's their only choice. They will not get an option to choose weekly testing instead. The governor then issued a warning to schools asking them to consider taking stronger action if vaccination levels become a concern at the district level. It will be hard, and I understand the politics, but I also understand if we don't take the right actions, schools can become super spreaders in September. It will happen. On the vaccine mandate for state workers, the governor is encouraging local governments to follow suit. Centers for Disease Control urging Americans now to wear masks indoors regardless of your vaccination status. In areas with substantial uh, transmissions of COVID-19, only one lo local county actually hits that mark. According to the CDC's website, Green County and Warren County have at least 50 new cases per 100,000 people over the last week, qualifying them as the agency's uh, substantial community transmission status. Uh, on the map here, yellow represents moderate community transmission. Blue is low. New York State is still reviewing the guidance.
New at four, former Nexium member Lauren Salzman, whose mother Nancy helped find, uh, was a founder of the local sex cult, will not spend any time in prison for her role in the organization. Instead, the judge giving Salzman credit for time served under house arrest, ordering her to serve five years of probation and complete 300 hours of community service. Federal prosecutors last week asked the judge for leniency, saying Saltzman's testimony proved crucial in convicting Nexium's leader and founder, Keith Ranieri. Saltzman's mother, Nancy, is scheduled for sentencing on September 8th. A parking garage in the heart of downtown Troy now closed indefinitely after a city engineer deemed it unsafe. News and ABC's Jen Seelig has details on the decision and what it means for people who rely on that garage for their daily parking space. Typically, the Uncle Sam parking garage looks like this. Lots of parked vehicles with cars driving in and out. But today, not a soul in sight. These signs are posted all over the garage, letting permit holders know the garage is closed indefinitely. Our city engineer saw conditions uh, that concerned him, so we have closed the garage to protect the public health and safety. Troy City Mayor Patrick Madden says his office received numerous complaints regarding the garage. And this isn't the first time it closed because of safety concerns. The garage is privately owned by the Bryce Companies, a local real estate business. We reached out and they have no comment. On Tuesday, permit holders received this email from the company regarding the closure. It states they're in the process of getting an engineer and says no one should be alarmed. And we'll work with the owner and uh, the owner's engineer to uh, identify and delineate the corrective actions that are necessary. Some garage permit holders who didn't want to go on camera say on some rainy days they would see a gooey white substance fall onto their cars. They're happy the city is looking into this, but now the question is, where can they park? We do have spaces that we can accommodate these people in. They can uh, buy permits in city lots and city parking facilities at this time. For those who normally park in the garage, no need to feed the meters. As long as you show your Uncle Sam parking pass on your car, you're free to park on any of the city streets. But for the next couple of days, um, they can park on the street with that pass, but they should make every effort to secure a, a, a valid parking permit. In Troy, Jen Selig, News 10, ABC. Continuing coverage in Cahos, environmental advocates today calling on DEC Commissioner Basil Segos to deny the city's Norlight facility a permit allowing them to burn waste. This is the latest action neighbors of Norlight and environmentalists are taking to try and get the site shut down. Residents say their cars are often covered in dust and claim there's a chlorine-like smell in the air because of the materials being incinerated at the facility. Although legislators have passed laws banning the burning of firefighter foam, which can contain PFAS chemicals, the group from Lights Out Norlight says they need further action from the FOMO administration. The PFAS chemicals was a small part of it, but Norlight continues to import massive amounts of liquid hazardous waste to be burned next to a public housing facility. A spokesperson for the DEC came downstairs, picked up the letter before the environmentalists could personally bring it to the commissioner's office. The department tells News 10 ABC addressing concerns about the Norlight facility remains a priority, and they encourage public participation in the permitting process. Norlight says they comply with all permits and operate within the regulations put in place to protect public health. You can read more about the issues at Norlight, including the recent referral of Norlight enforcement to the Attorney General, on our website, news10.com. I don't think anybody has an issue with the weather today, just gorgeous. It is a perfect, pers perfect day for pretty much anything you want yeah. to do outdoors today. Let's send it back to the News 10 ABC studio in Albany for a quick look at our Storm Tracker forecast. Absolutely, get the windows wide open tonight and air out the house because some of you are tired of the AC getting that stale smell. Hi everyone, a good Wednesday tea, a beautiful shot, not only up at the race course, but also across the river from the Rensselaer Rail Station, looking back toward Empire State Plaza. That blend of clouds and sunshine and temperature-wise thus far, well, 
about 74 for an unofficial high. We'll get that reading coming in as we head toward the top of the 5 o'clock hour. 73 right now here in Albany. Down the road from the race course, it is 76. 76 at Pittsfield, 78 Hudson, 74 Glens Falls, 72 at Johnstown. Upper 60s to you make your way toward Big Moose and Lake Pleasant. All right, let's check out the dew points. As promised, they have been slowly falling during the course of the day today. Many of us in the 50s, still some lower 60s, so a little bit of a humid feel as you make your way to the south and southeast of Albany. But we'll all get into the 50s as we head through tonight. It's drier, it continues to be steered into the region.